Good day, my Dwell Academy students. I am Jipar Simabanwa, your head coach here. I would like to greet all of our students here in the Philippines and other part in other countries like Dubai, Saudi Arabia, US, Qatar, Kuwait, Oman. We also have students from Ireland and also United Kingdom. And of course, from the Philippines, okay, from Lawag City, from Baholog City, Ilipilo City. We also have uh, from Davao, okay, from Mindanao. So thank you so much for your support. Okay. We would also like to give special mention to our business partner, Innov Field Management and Staff. Thank you the afternoon. Thank you so much for trusting MindWeb. And shout out to Ms. Niso Midonova, also to Janalison Castaneda, Mr. Ramil Robles, and Ms. Wayo Pidilla. This is from, I know you're from Lawag. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. And also... Mr. Guyal and Love Solosho. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so for today, we are introducing a new format of live class. We call it uh, we call this one as Mind Web Fishbowl Sessions. If that eh, galing sa amin yung question, this time, sa inyo mga galing yung questions, okay? And then, pinili namin yung pinaka-common na questions na based doon sa NCLEX test plan. So, most of the topics that we'll be discussing this time are based on the current NCLEX test plan, okay? So, don't worry, most of the questions naman na i-discuss natin later, yun ang common na request ninyo. Okay, so this time, hindi magagaling sa amin ng questions, manggagaling sa inyo yung questions so that magtitignan natin kung ano yung pinaka-common na uh, weakness natin, okay? Especially sa nursing concept, okay? I think we have okay, questions about ABG, ECG analysis, okay? So we have noted all of those things, okay? Don't worry, in our program, covered lahat ng topics na nire-request po ninyo. Okay, and one more, we have, okay, to congratulate our new USRN, and our new USRN, the name is Mr. Rudes Kalugay. Alright, so congratulations, Mr. Rudes Kalugay. Okay, so we have a growing number of USRNs. So join MindWeb Academy. Okay, please again share the video para madami makabenefit. Okay, again this is your questions. We will be discussing your requested questions. So please share okay, the video, the live class, para mas madami nurses din ang matutulungan natin. And I am very excited to help you pass the endless, of course, through our program. Okay, are you excited for your questions? Okay, later, we will be discussing common questions na request niyo. Okay, again, share the video and get free nursing bullets para makadam para madami niyo makabenefit. Now, you can get a free nursing bullets from us if you share this uh, FB Live class. Okay, can I see okay, a like sign? Okay, a heart sign? Okay, in a few minutes, 
we will be starting with your okay with the discussion of your requested topic these are specialized nursing concepts from you guys and expect more of this okay in the coming weeks or in the coming months that will be our of course a service to the nurses Okay, nurses, let's just, just wait for others. Okay, pa bago natin start yung okay, discussion natin, para makabenefit naman sila, like um, your, the, the most important concept in nursing. Okay, you can now, okay, for those who are watching now, you can prepare pen and paper for notes. Okay, and then later be, okay, you, oh, I want your participation. You can comment your, again, answer on the comment section. You'll make this discussion as lively as possible. Okay, so again, this will be a um, sort of question and answer, a quiz be type. So that my participation had. Okay, so again, for the test format so far, there is no change in the test format. We will still be, we are waiting for the updated, okay, test plan. And hopefully by March 2019, we'll have the new test plan. But don't worry about the test plan. If you know your nursing concept, there's no need for you to, of course, be afraid kung ano man yung test format natin. If you know your concept, kahit paano man magtanong si NLEX, alam natin because we have, of course, a solid foundation. Alam natin yung nursing concept natin. So kahit iselect or that apply tayo, kahit i-multiple choice tayo, i-drag and drop man yung test format natin, you know your nursing concept. So you should know your basic foundation, the basic nursing concept. Go back to your basic nursing concept. Do not just um, use... Okay, applications, okay, question and answers, okay, especially for those who are working uh, outside the nursing practice, medyo mahirap bumalik sa question and answer, reading the rationale without, of course, going back to your basic concept, okay, especially fundamentals, okay, and for system topic. Our digital review program is divided into three phases, okay, so we will start from the basic uh, we would like we would like to greet Miss Jen Olvindo from Enoville. Thank you so much for the class again, ma'am. Okay, for the three phases of our program, the first phase of our digital online program, the first phase nurses we have the refresher. In the refresher, I don't want you to answer immediately question and answer. Because there are times na naguguluhan ang nurses pag nagbasa sila ng questions with answers and rationale without okay, discussing first and mastering the basic concept. So bago kayo pumunta nurses ng question and answer, start with the basic nursing concept. So in our program, okay, our first phase is the refresher. So in the refresher course, we have per system discussion. We have neuro nursing, we have cardiovascular nursing, we have cancer nursing, we have respiratory nursing, okay? And all systems are covered. Plus, okay, of course, since we, you will be taking NPLEX, I have, as well discussed in the refresher, the delegation, the prioritization, okay, the critical thinking, the use of your critical thinking skills, and also your test taking strategies. Aside from that, Okay, expect also your nursing assessment, the mental status examination, psychotherapeutic medications in the refresher course. Okay, after mastering the refresher course, that will be your basic foundation. Okay, our phase two is the intensive phase. The intensive phase is a series of drills. This time, i-apply nyo natin lahat ng concept, okay, na nakita natin, tsaka naintindihan natin sa refresher. So this time, we are expecting, of course, a mandatory score of 75% because 
all of those topics okay was discussed previously in the refresher okay so dapat may foundation muna tayo dito nyo nurses magkikita na ang need ng foundation tsaka ng basic concept kasi sobrang hirap intindihin pag hindi natin alam ang basic concept muna i-master muna natin yon okay so that's your phase 2 then for the phase 3 we call the phase 3 as your booster rocket base in the booster program, we have specialized nursing topics, right? One of your specialized, specialized nursing topic, we have included your ABG analysis, okay? We have also your ECG analysis. We have your leadership management and nursing research, okay? I know you, um, you're familiar with that. We have also your dietary therapies. We have also complementary and alternative therapies, okay? And then... Okay, updated nursing bullets in the booster phase and other specialized nursing topics. Okay, the three phases this time, we would like to announce also that we have now the automated, okay, or timed and randomized predictor exam. So we have predictor exam, okay, almost the same as your NCLEX. It means actually the actual NCLEX. Okay, so this will be your final assessment and evaluation. Okay, at the end of your booster phase, you have the predictor exam. This will assess your, okay, readiness. Kung ready na talaga tayo kumuha na exam. Okay, so it's uh, random legal calling you questions and it can generate a candidate performance report. Okay, so the report will give you the below passing rate, the near passing standard, and above passing standard. So the recommendations are there also in your CPR or the candidate performance report for if you get a near passing standard or below the passing standard, work on those areas kasi yun ang weakness natin, okay? So this will serve as your guide para palalong makaprepare sa exam. If you have got a score above the passing standard, okay, you should not start of course to maintain your proficiency, okay, practice more, and of course, Okay, do question and answer, okay? But again, I would like you to, okay, take note that the refresher and the basic foundation is very important, okay? It will be a waste of time, okay, answering question and answer, all the application without understanding, of course, your disease process, okay? So again, we are also launching a new innovation all for you very soon, okay? And... Guess what's that? Okay, we will be we will be having automated drills already. Okay, so aside from your automated predictor exam, we will have okay uh, very soon we'll have automated drills. Okay, so this time we have to innovate. We have to be with okay. Dapat in line tayo sa NCLEX, which is of course computer adaptive exam. As you share the video, comment down below your name and country, where you're from, your email address so the team can send to you the nursing bullets, and feel free to tag your friends. We have 100 plus viewers right now. Just wait, okay? Let's just wait. We can all start. Comment down your answer before I give the right answer and rationale. Okay, you can comment, you can participate, okay? Let's make this discussion, okay, lively. Okay, you can participate. Okay, can we start with question number one? Okay, so this is your first question. Okay, this is from Miss Abigail Vincent. Hi. Okay, the question is, pwede po ba mag-request ng respiratory topics na i-discuss? Thanks in advance po. God bless. Right. Okay. So, thank you for this question. Okay. Respiratory topics. Okay. Ang gusto niyong i-request. So, again, this is not from us. Galing to sa inyo. Yung mga topics natin. Alright. So, first question. Okay. Respiratory topics. Okay. So, what common respiratory topics that you can encounter in NCLEX? Most common nurses are, of course, you have... 
your okay obstructive disorder okay so we have actually two major disorder under respiratory system okay the first one is your obstructive disorder and the second one here is what you call your restrictive disorder Okay, so you have to master nurses before taking your exam how to differentiate obstructive disorder from restrictive disorders, right? Those are two major common topics in your NCLEX under respiratory system. Okay, the obstructive disorder and your restrictive disorder. I'm going to explain that later. Okay, so I have here one common question in NCLEX. Okay that discuss that, that that is focusing more on your respiratory disorder okay let's check question number one here okay so for question number one since you are we you are requesting for respiratory topic okay so this is one of the most common question in your NCLEX okay for question number one which of the following obstructive disorders characterized by a loss of elastic recoil of the alveolar wall leading to respiratory acidosis. So again, the keyword nurses, okay, content area. Okay, the content area here is physiologic integrity. Remember, you have the eight content area in NCLEX, right? You have physiologic integrity, you have pharmacology and parenteral therapies, management of care, we have basic care and comfort, we have Okay, reduction of your risk potential. We also have your management of care, right? Okay, so this one is your physiologic integrity. The test format is, okay, select all that apply. So the keyword nurse says is, what obstructive disorders, okay, so that will be your keyword, obstructive disorders is characterized by a loss. Nawala yung elastic recoil of the alveoli leading to respiratory acidosis select all that apply okay so you, you can comment your answer on the comment section okay we are waiting for you mahirap ba so this is from you nurses okay so again like the page Share the video. Okay, make sure that naka public po siya. Comment down your name, the country, your email in the comment section. And then please tag your friends. Wala pa pong nakakakuha ng tamang sagot. Bakit kaya? Okay, so kasi alam na natin. So, medyo hirap tayo sa respiratory disorders. At least alam natin na yun pala ang weakness natin. Don't worry. If you join our digital digital online review, covered lahat ng respiratory topics natin. Okay? So, ito po. Okay. Bibigyan na natin ng tamang answer and full okay, explanation. Okay? Don't worry. I'm going to explain that later. Okay. May nakakuha na doon ang correct na answer. But it takes how many minutes? Bago tayo nakakuha. Okay. So, before I give you the correct answer here, nurses, again, let's go back. Okay, under respiratory system, we have two major disorders. Okay, dalawa daw tayong disorder under respiratory system. The first one is what you call obstructive disorder. Remember, nurses, when you say obstructive disorder, we are talking about obstruction of the airway. Pag tatagalugin natin, may bara doon sa daanan ng hangin. Yun ang tinatawag na obstructive disorder. Alright, okay. So, when you say obstructive disorder, your keyword here is that there is obstruction of the airway, of the bronchial airway. From the term obstructive. So, obstruction okay, of the bronchial airway. So, that should be your basic pathophysiologic problem under obstructive disorder. Merong bara, yung daanan ng hangin. Alright, what about, sir, when you say restrictive disorder? From the term nurses, restrictive, restrict, we are limiting the expansion of the lungs. So, iba yung bara, 
kasi obstruction po yun. Pero pag nililimit daw natin ang lasa maka-expand, tawag natin sa disorder na yun is restrictive disorder. Did you get my point? Alright, so the keyword under restrictive disorder is that we are, there is limitation. Okay, limitation. Okay, in your lung expansion. Pagtatagalubin natin, may limitation ang lungs natin sa pag-expand. Bakit kaya? Okay, so if I'm going to make use of a mind mapping strategy here, in MindWeb, we are making use of a mind mapping strategy para hindi tayo memorize na memorize po. Okay, so in your obstructive disorder, this is the airway, the bronchial airway. Remember, the bronchial airway nurses should be patent para maganda yung galaw ng oxygen at carbon dioxide natin. Tama po ba? So it should be patent. But if there is inflammation here, there is presence of bronchospasm and presence of your mucus, can that obstruct the airway? Yung pamamaga po ba can obstruct the airway? Yes. Okay? The bronchospasm po ba can obstruct the airway? Yes. The presence of mucus in the bronchial airway, can that obstruct the airway? Yes. So that is what I mean by obstructive disorder. Merong maglakabara doon sa daanan ng hangin. Alright. What about nurses when I say restrictive disorder? Alright, when I say restrictive disorder, okay, let me just make use of a representation. This is your lungs, okay? You have two lungs, right? The right and you have the left, right? The right lung has three lobes. One, two, three, right? Okay, the left lung has two lobes. So one, two, okay? Remember nurses that your lungs is being protected here by a pleural cavity. Meron pleural cavity dito. Tama po ba? Inside the pleural cavity is a little amount of your fluid to prevent friction. So meron daw kokoming tubig dito. Okay? Inside the pleural cavity. But kahit meron siyang kokoming tubig or fluid inside the pleural cavity, okay, take note nurses that the pressure within the pleural cavity is negative. Negative po ang pressure dito. Okay? Inside the pleural cavity. Pag sinabi natin negative, walang force doon sa loob okay, ng pleural cavity natin. Kahit merong konting tubig or pleural fluid. Did you get my point? Okay. So, what will happen pag merong restrictive disorder ang client natin? I'll give you hypothetical example nurses. What if there is penetrating injury here? Nagkaroon daw ng penetrating injury yung client natin. Okay. So, sinaksak yung client natin. That's penetrating injury. Nung nagkaroon ng penetrating injury, is it possible, nurses, na pumasok yung hangin dito? The air, yes, will manage to enter the pleural cavity. Right? Okay. Since there is presence of air inside the pleural cavity, the air here... Okay, could accumulate. Pwede silang dumami at dumami ang hangin. Tama po ba? Kasi nabutas. Okay. Nung nagkaroon ng hangin sa loob, the negative pressure here becomes positive. Did you get my point? Okay, so the negative pressure becomes positive. Since dumadami ang hangin sa loob, can that, okay, push the lungs to the opposite side? Yes. Habang dumadami yung hangin dito, it will push the lungs to the opposite side. Habang pinupush ng hangin, okay, ang lungs natin sa opposite na side, are we limiting, okay, the expansion of the lung? Yes, okay? So, when you say, nurses, presence of air inside the pleural cavity, and the pleural cavity nagkaroon ng positive pressure, and the positive pressure, okay, push the, pushes the lungs to the opposite side, then that will restrict or limit the expansion of the lungs. Do you get my point? So that is not obstructive disorder, but that is what you call restrictive disorder. Kasi yung hangin, pinupush niya, kinocompress na yung lungs natin para hindi mag-expand. Tama po ba? So that is a restrictive disorder. So the presence of air inside the pleural cavity, since nalilimit yung pag-expand the lungs, tawag natin doon pneumothorax. Do you get my point? Okay. Is it possible na blood ang pumasok tsaka yung blood dumami dito? Yes, you're correct. Pwede dumami ang blood. And the presence of blood here okay, can lead to a positive pressure. That positive pressure can compress the lungs also. 
leading to what? Limitation in the expansion of your lungs. And that is what she called hemothorax. So pneumothorax, hemothorax is an example of restrictive disorder. Okay. What about if there is presence of fluid or water? That's hydrothorax. Yes, that can also compress the lungs. So that is what? A restrictive disorder. So anong gagawin ng nurse? Kasi may positive pressure doon sa loob. Do we need to eliminate that positive pressure? Kailan ba natin i-drain yung water na yon? Yung tubig? Yung blood na yon? Yes, kukunin natin siya with the use of your what? Chest tube. Okay? So, i-drain natin para maka-expand uli ang lungs natin. Did you get my point? Okay? So, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I was just trying to differentiate your obstructive disorder from your restrictive disorder. Take note of your keyword in obstructive disorder, may bara yung daanan ng hangin. Pero sa restrictive disorder, may positive pressure na kapasok sa pleural cavity. Then, na compress yung lungs natin, na limit natin siya mag-expand po. Alright? That's why you have obstructive versus your restrictive disorder. Okay. So, medyo mahaba-habang usapan pa po tayo. Okay, let's go back to the question. So, obviously, nurses, I have to eliminate now... Okay, since we are just talking about obstructive disorder, I have to eliminate now hemothorax, right? Wala na si hemothorax because hemothorax is not an obstructive disorder, right? Okay, same with your pneumothorax. This is not obstructive but a restrictive disorder, right? Aside from hemothorax and your pneumothorax, eliminate also your hydrothorax, okay? So, all of those things, your hemothorax, your pneumothorax and your hydrothorax, they are all restrictive disorder. So you are left with your obstructive disorder na lang. The bronchial asthma, the emphysema, and your chronic bronchitis. But the question is, what obstructive disorder daw characterize ng loss of the elastic recoil? Okay, so this is now the answer. You can just follow. Okay, so nurses, we have what she calls COPD. And once again, the meaning of COPD, it's chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Alright, so for COPD or obstructive disorder, the first one here is your bronchial asthma. So bronchial asthma, okay, according to the American Chest Association, is an obstructive disorder. Alright. Aside from bronchial asthma, we also have your emphysema. Okay, and still, okay, according to American okay, Chest Association, aside from emphysema, you also have what you call here your chronic bronchitis. So we have three obstructive disorder. You have your bronchial asthma here, emphysema, and you have your chronic bronchitis. Pero titignan natin, alin sa tatlo po ang, nag, ang nawala yung elastic recoil. Okay? Tatlo ba sila nawala yung elastic recoil? Dalawa sa kanila? Or isa lang sa kanila? Because we are talking about select all that apply. Okay? Let me discuss first your bronchial asthma. Since bronchial asthma is an obstructive disorder, bronchial asthma nurses is characterized by presence of inflammation na mamaga yung airway ng client natin. Okay, so analyze nyo. Pag ang daanan ng hangin na mamaga, can that lead to obstruction? Obviously, the answer is yes. Okay, aside from inflammation, another problem in your bronchial asthma is bronchospasm. Okay, you also have your bronchospasm. Nag-contract po ang smooth muscle of the airway. Pag ito yung daanan ng hangin na maga, so may obstruction, then nag-contract pa siya. So lalo nag-narrow ang airway ng client. The more na na-obstruct, tama po ba? Aside from bronchospasm, the other problem with bronchial asthma is the presence of your mucus. Alright? Okay, the presence of your mucus. The problem in your emphysema, bakit siya obstructive disorder? Okay, it's because there is now deficiency of your alpha-1 anti-trypsin. Okay. Para mas maintindihan natin ang trypsin muna, nurses. Trypsin. 
Ang trypsin natin is a proteolytic enzyme na kinakain po niya or dinadigest niya ang alveolar tissue natin. Did you get my point? Okay. So, since we have now your trypsin, okay, kinakain pala niya ang alveolar tissue natin, the human being, tayo mga human being, dapat meron tinatawag na alpha-1 antitrypsin. Dapat may antitrypsin tayo. Lahat tayo meron tinatawag na antitrypsin. But there are genetic predisposition or selected population na kulang ng tinatawag ng antitrypsin. That's why, pag walang antitrypsin, dumadami yung trypsin na kumakain sa alveolar tissue. So, nasisira ang alveolar wall. So, that is a problem in your emphysema. Alright. So, since there is no antitrypsin, so there is now, okay, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Okay. So, what will happen if there is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency? I'm going to explain that later. In your chronic bronchitis, there is now increase of your mucus, okay, or productive cough, okay, for 3 months, okay, times 2 successive years. Okay, that is the criteria para malaman natin or masabi natin na chronic bronchitis ang case ng client natin. Tama po ba? Okay, isa-isahin natin. In bronchial asthma, ito po yung nangyari. This is the airway. Ano yung unang problem natin sa bronchial asthma? Namagat. Nung namaga siya, nag-contract pa. So, lalong lumiit yung daanan ng hangin. Tama po ba? Okay? Then, nung lumiit yung daanan ng hangin, okay, nagkaroon pa ng mucus production ang client natin. So, can you consider bronchial asthma as obstructive disorder? Yes, kasi tatlo yung problema. Namaga, nag-broca spasem, nagkaroon pa ng mucus. Tama po ba? So, the carbon dioxide here, okay, since the carbon dioxide should go out, natatrap yung carbon dioxide natin. Kasi hindi siya makalabas. Tama po ba? Kasi obstructed. Since obstructed, narod ang airway ng client natin, the carbon dioxide here is dropped. So, there is now dropping of your carbon dioxide. If you have dropping of carbon dioxide, ang dami kong carbon dioxide sa loob, okay, that can lead to an acid-base imbalance. You call that one as your respiratory acidosis. Okay? So, the dropping of carbon dioxide can lead to your respiratory acidosis. Remember that. Okay, so your bronchial asthma therefore can lead to what? Respiratory acidosis. Kasi pag tatagalogin natin, yung carbon dioxide sa loob, hindi na siya nakalabas. Bakit hindi siya nakalabas? Ba-obstruct kasi yung airway natin. Did you get my point? Okay, let's go back to your emphysema. Since kulang tayo ng okay, panlaban sa trypsin, yung trypsin na yun, kakainin at kakainin niya ang alveolar wall natin. Okay, pag nawala yung alveolar wall na, pag nasira, ang alveolar wall natin, there is now what she call oh, okay, loss of the elastic recoil. Okay, there is no loss of your of the elastic recoil of the alveolar. Okay, when they say nurses loss of the elastic recoil, ganito lang po yun kasimple. Tingin kay sir. Pag ganito ang alveoli natin, okay, ito yung alveoli natin. Okay, I hope you can still follow. If this is the alveoli, nasa loob po ang carbon dioxide after the gas exchange. Pag andito sa, alveo, sa loob ng alveoli natin ang carbon dioxide, dapat ang alveoli natin mag-distend. And since distended siya, dapat mag-recoil siya and should push the carbon dioxide outside. Can you follow? That's normal. Okay. So pag normal daw ang alveolar wall natin, hindi siya nasira, meron siyang tinatawag na elastic recoil. Ano siya ng elastic recoil? Pag puno-puno siya ng carbon dioxide, it should what? Distend and should push the carbon dioxide palabas. Dapat ilabas yung ano? Carbon dioxide. That is what you call the elastic recoil. Did you get my point? Alright. Since walang alpha-1 antitrypsin ang client natin, nasira yung alveolar wall. Nawala ang elastic recoil. Nung dumami ang carbon dioxide dito, nag-distend si okay, alveolar wall, pero wala siyang tinatawag na elastic recoil. So ang ginawa niya, ganun lang siya. Hindi niya nagpo-push pat 
uh, palabas ang carbon dioxide natin. Di ka point. Again, the normal, pag punong-puno, tatagalogin natin para mas maintindihan, pag punong-puno ng carbon dioxide ang alveolar, alveoli natin, nagdi-distend siya and pinupush niya palabas ang carbon dioxide. Yun ang titawag na ano, elastic recoil. Okay, ganun ako mag-explain. Since nawala ang elastic recoil na M5C mga patient, dumadami ang carbon dioxide sa loob, pero hindi niya napupush palabas. Ganun, gumaganun lang ang alveoli natin. So, nare-retain po ba ang carbon dioxide? Yes. So, nurses, ang M5C man natin can also lead to what? Dropping of your carbon dioxide. Okay? The dropping of your carbon dioxide can lead to what? Respiratory acidosis. Okay? So, that is a unique characteristic or feature of your empyzema. Alright. For chronic bronchitis, since you have mucus or productive cup for 3 months times, times 2 years, successive years, madami ba ang mucus production sa bronchial airway ng client? Yes. Pwede bang bumara ang airway ng client? Yes. Since bumara, ang carbon dioxide ba pwede lumabas? Kasi may bara. Hindi din. So, there is also what? Dropping again of carbon dioxide leading to respiratory acidosis. Therefore, nurses remember, lahat ng COPD case natin, bronchial asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, isipin nyo lagi, may trapping of carbon dioxide. Hindi nakalabas si carbon dioxide. Pasensya po ulit-ulit. So, bronchial asthma, hindi nakalabas si carbon dioxide kasi namaga, may bronchus passive, tsaka may mucus. Okay? Sa emphysema, hindi nakalabas ang carbon dioxide kasi nawala ang elastic recoil. Okay? Hindi na na-push palabas ang carbon dioxide. Leading to what? Respiratory acidosis. Sa chronic bronchitis, madami kang mucus production for 3 months. So, hindi din nakalabas si carbon dioxide. Leading to what? Respiratory acidosis. Okay? So, they will share the same acid-base imbalance. Did you get my point? Okay. Titignan pa natin sa NPLEX. Pag may select or not apply, aside from respiratory acidosis, ano pong pwede natin idagdag sa lahat ng COPD client natin? Tingnan nyo lagi, nag-trap ako ng carbon dioxide sa tatlo. Since may trapping of carbon dioxide sa loob, yung carbon dioxide ba nurses, gas po ba siya? Yes. Since ang daming gas sa loob, so ang lungs ba natin deflated or inflated? Inflated po siya. So, pag inflated, madaming gas sa loob, the anterior and the posterior diameter of the chest is enlarged. That's why you have what? Enlarged chest diameter also. That's common for what? COPD client. Okay? So, what will be your answer here? Okay, since we are talking about obstructive, pwede sana yung tatlo. But then, specific si NTLEX, sabi niya, alin sa mga obstructive disorder natin ang nawalan ng elastic recoil? Hindi siya nag-recoil, kaya natatrap ang carbon dioxide. Okay, wala dito, wala din dito. So, the best answer is m sima Okay? So, again, I have to okay, eliminate bronchial asthma and I have to eliminate chronic bronchitis. Okay? Just an update. For select all that apply, you can have, a, you have, you can have maximum of maximum all and minimum one. Okay? So this time, what is very confusing here is that ang daming obstructive disorder. So kung ako, wala akong background sa pathophysiology at hindi ako nag-aral, lahat dito ng obstructive disorder, iti-check ko. Pero si NCLEX, okay, requires you to think. It requires you to analyze and make use of your critical thinking skills. Talagang iti-test niya yung knowledge mo sa nursing concept. So do we need preparation nurses? Yes, we need Preparation, alright? Okay, because hindi lang basta-basta ibibigay yung license natin. We need to prepare for your NPLEX, okay? So that's why the answer here is your m sima There is loss of the elastic recoil. Hindi na ilalabas ang carbon dioxide, okay? So I hope everything is clear. Okay, can I see a thumbs up sign or a hard sign? Okay, we have, okay, uh, so many viewers. How many viewers right now? We have from 100, okay, up to 270. Thank you so much okay, for your time. Okay, so I hope everything is clear for your obstructive disorder and your restrictive disorder.
Okay. Have you learned something from the discussion verses? Can I see a thumbs up sign? Have you learned something? Okay. May little thumbs up po ba? Okay, so thank you so much. Okay, so I hope you have learned something from the obstructive and your restrictive disorder. Maraming salamat sa, okay, pinupusuan nyo. Okay, and also thank you for the thumbs up sign. Okay, so next question. Okay, ano kayo maging next question natin? Okay, so baka galing to ng Saudi Arabia? Or maybe from Dubai? Or maybe from Davao? Okay, we just don't know. Or maybe Mom Jen from Bicol. Okay, let's have your second question here. Alright. From JB Hogrose. Okay, Mr. JB Hogrose. Thank you for the question. Requested topic. Okay, requested talaga. Okay, sir. Can you discuss pediatric nursing? Okay. The growth and development and the developmental stages. Okay, so Mr. JB is from Kuwait. Okay, from Kuwait. Alright. So, pediatric nursing yung topic na nil na nirequest niya. Okay, and I know, pediatric nursing is, of course, medyo very objective siya, diba? Okay, from month to months. Okay, so you need, of course, your milestone. And we need, of course, to know by heart your, okay, growth and development and the developmental milestone. Okay. But what is common right now in your NCLEX <clears throat> is the patterns of GMD. Don't forget the patterns of your GMD. So I have here one common question or, okay, the previous question in NCLEX that we need to answer. Okay, so are you ready for question number two? Since you have requested for pediatric nursing, this is, okay, health promotion, pediatric nursing. Okay, and then your test format again is select all that apply. Alright, in directional patterns of growth and development, which statement is incorrect? Okay, so take note of the keyword nurses in directional patterns of GND. Okay, so remember in your pediatric nursing, your directional patterns. Okay. Baka sinasabi nyo na, kaya nga ayaw ko mag-aaral mag ng mag pedia. Kasi sa directional patterns pa lang, hindi ko na siya alam. Tama po ba? Alright, that's pediatric nursing. You have to be very, okay, okay, objective here. So the key word is directional patterns of GND and which statements is incorrect. Okay, you have to take note also, hahanapin natin yung incorrect na answer. Tama po ba? Select all that apply. Alright, so... You can comment your answer again in the comment section. You are to look for incorrect. So far, no correct answer. Look for incorrect nurses, incorrect statement regarding directional patterns of growth and development. Kaya yan. Let's see who will... I hope kahit isa may maka-answer nito. Okay, that's very tricky. That's why dapat ng prepare sa NLEX. Okay, I have given the keywords already. Directional patterns. Okay, statement incorrect. Select all that apply. Do we have a winner right now, mom? Okay. So, one more minute to answer. Control over the head, the mouth, and eye movement proceeds control over the upper body, torso, and legs. The patterns are definite and non-predictable. The development progresses from the peripheral to midline. Development occurs as a child masters simple operations after complex one. 
and then development occurs along the body's long axis and the child plays alone then with others. So we are talking about patterns of G and D. Okay, wala pa ding correct na answer. So that's why medyo hirap tayo sa pediatric nursing. Okay, we have a win right now. Congratulations for those who get the correct answer. Okay, so nurses, before I give the correct answer, let me first discuss in detail, okay, the patterns of your GND or patterns of growth and development. Basically, we have two types of, okay, patterns of your GND. The first one here is what you call directional. Okay, you have your directional. Okay, patterns of GND. And the second one here is what you call your sequential. Okay, have your sequential okay, patterns. When you say nurses directional, okay, this is with the use of okay, the body's long axis. Okay, we are making use of the body's long axis. And this is something that is predictable. Okay? So, something that is predictable, na predict natin siya. So, it occurs along the long axis of the body and something that is, okay, predictable. Okay, aside from that, okay, you have to consider also when you say directional patterns of G and D, it should be cephalocaudal. Dapat mauna muna ang control ng head, the neck, and then the lower Okay, extremities. So, here, you have to include your cephalocaudal. Okay, cephalo first. So, then you develop muna yung ulo. Then after that, you have the neck, the upper extremities, and the lower extremities. Alright, that is directional patterns of G and D. Aside from that, okay, aside from your cephalocaudal, you also have your proximodistal. Okay, have your proximal distal. What do I mean by proximal distal? It can be restated also from midline to peripheral. So, galing dito, ang develop, mauna mo develop from the proximal area or from the midline hanggang dulo. So, ibig sabihin po nun, mauuna ang control ng arms natin bago ang controls of the fine motors of the fingers. Kanyipalo. So, from here, from the midline, proximal distal not from the peripheral to midline so it should be from the midline to your peripheral area so control of the arm first bago natin ma-master to ang okay fine motor ng fingers natin all right ipalit that one a short okay proximal distal or midline to peripheral all right aside from that still under directional is what you call mass to specific so when you say nurses mass to specific, okay, the child dapat na ko control niyo muna ang simple operation bago ang complex operation. Okay, dapat simple operation muna then complex operation. Tawag natin diyan mass to specific. So other term, simple operation first, then down to your complex operation. Okay? So you have to know by heart, okay, your patterns of G and D. So, the first one here is directional. What about when I say sequential? When I say sequential nurses, this is pattern of G and D that focuses on your behavior. Okay, the behavior. You also have your locomotion. Locomotion or movement or the motor function. Then you also have your language. Okay? And your social skills. Yun pong tinatawag na sequential. Okay? It focuses on your behavior, the locomotion of the child, the language, 
and the social skills. So, isa-isahin natin which one is incorrect here. Okay, so let all it apply. Remember, we are just talking about directional, not sequential. Okay? So, let's check letter A. Control over the head, the mouth, okay, the eye movement, okay, then the upper body, torso, and legs. Is that several call that? So, this is check. Okay, so this is check. The patterns are definite in unpredictable. It's something that is predictable. Alright, so this should be included. Okay, as incorrect statement. Okay, development progresses from peripheral to midline. Galing daw dito papunta sa midline. Should from where? Midline to peripheral. That's why tawag natin proximo distal. So this is incorrect. Alright? Development the course as child master simple operations after complex. Ano ba mauuna? Simple muna bago ang complex or complex muna? Okay, mauuna muna ang simple then complex. So it should be para ma-correct natin to, simple operations before complex one. So this is incorrect also. All right? Okay, so you have your okay. B C D are now your incorrect statement. What about E? Let's check. Development of course along the body's long axis. That's correct. Okay, because we are talking about directional. Let's check F. A child plays alone then with others. Totoo ba yun na solitary muna bago ako makipag-play sa ibang mga bata? Tama po yun. But this is not directional. This is more on the social skills. So ano po siya? Sequential. Tama ang F. But this is not directional. Ano sabi ni Enflex? Directional lang tayo. Tama po ba? So, you have to eliminate this. Although this is correct, but this is not directional. This is sequential patterns of G and D. Okay? So, your correct answer should be only letter B, letter C, letter D, and letter F. I know most of you na confuse sa letter F because this is correct, right? But this is not directional. This is sequential patterns of G and D or growth and development. I know, medyo confusing and mahirap talaga ang, okay, growth and development and the milestone. But in our digital review program, we have included all of those things, okay? So experience our digital online program okay it's covered in our refresher intensive and booster phase of the program okay so i hope everything is clear in number two okay so thank you so much and congratulations for those who get, for those who get the correct answer it should be letter b c d and f Okay, for, are you ready for our next question? Saan kaya mga galing yung next natin na question? Okay, let's try. Okay, from Mr. Car Carl Abes. Okay, Carl Abes. Requested topic is OB nursing, obstetric nursing. Yung requested na topic from Mr. Carl Abes. Thank you, okay, for this question. Actually, may mga common kayo na mga questions. More of pedia, more of obstetric nursing, more of nursing research, ABG, and ECG. Okay. Inline naman lahat yun sa NCLEX test plan natin. Alright. So again, requested topic is OB topic. So let's answer one obstetric nursing topic in NCLEX. And that would be for question number three. Okay, question number three here. Alright. So for question number three, this is health promotion of obstetric nursing, the content area, and in the test format, you can make use of drug and drop because the question is arrange in chronological order the ovarian cycle changes in the female reproductive cycle or menstrual cycle. Nurses, take note of the keyword ovarian cycle only. What's happening in the ovaries of your client during Okay, the menstrual cycle. Okay, it should be arranged in chronological order, right? 
Okay, so uh, we are waiting for your correct answer. What should be the first one? Okay, the next one. So we have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, they arrange natin in chronological order. Okay, you can now comment your answer in the comment section. So far, okay, none. Okay, make use of your analysis. You can make use of your prod, um, of your stock knowledge if you have the stock knowledge. Wala na bang stock knowledge? Okay, so we are talking about the menstrual cycle. Ano, ano kayo mauuna muna? Bakit kaya nagkaroon ng menstruation yung babae? What should be the first one? And bakit nasa slough off sa area? And nagkaroon ng menstruation yung babae? What are the hormones involved in your okay, menstrual cycle or your ovarian cycle? No. Okay. Wala pa daw. May nakakuha na correct na answer. We're waiting for those with stack knowledge. Okay. Ask yourself first. What should be the stimulus? Bakit nagkakaroon ng hormone release dito, and magsa-start na ang menstrual cycle. Ano kayo yung kinaka-stimulus natin, natin dito? Do we have a winner, ma'am? None? Okay. Sige. So, for the benefit of time, so okay, you can just listen maybe to my okay, answer. Okay. So, so that na, makukuha natin yung correct na answer. Again, please share the video para may maka-benefit maka yung mga other nurses natin. Okay? So, medyo na-identify na natin yung weakness natin. Tama po ba? More of what? Obstetric nursing. Pero, anatomy and physiology pa lang to ng obstetric nursing natin. Okay. So, nurses, before I answer, let me discuss first what's happening okay, in the ovary of your client and in the vitrium during the menstrual cycle. Okay. So, under ovarian cycle, the, this is 5 to 14 days. I'll start first with your 5 to 14 days. The 5 to 14 days is what you call your follicular phase. All right, your follicular phase nurses, okay, five to 14 days, is that there should be decreased level of your estrogen and progesterone. Okay, so decreased level of estrogen and progesterone. All right, the decreased level of estrogen and progesterone will serve as your stimulus so that the hypothalamus will release what you call your GnRH or the gonadotropic releasing hormone. Okay? So since you have the stimulus, bagsak daw. Yung estrogen at progesterone natin, mag-release na tayo ng GnRH or the gonadotropic releasing hormone. The GnRH now will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland. Okay, releasing what you call your FSH or the follicular stimulating hormone. So, mauuna muna na low levels ng estrogen and progesterone. Pag na-detect na hypothalamus na bagsak ang estrogen at progesterone, labas na po siya sa ng GnRH. Pag may GnRH, stimulate yan na si anterior pituitary gland, releasing na the follicular stimulating hormone. 
So what would happen if there is now follicular stimulating hormone? Okay, so it's is in natin. If there is follicular stimulating hormone, the first thing that will going to happen is that this will of course stimulates your follicles. Okay, stimulates follicles. Okay, in the ovaries. Okay. Stimulation of your follicles nurses will increase further your estrogen. Okay, will increase further the estrogen. Number two, aside from stimulation of your follicles, okay, most of these follicles die and will only leave one mature follicle. And that mature follicle is what she called the graafian follicle. Alright, so the mature follicle. Lahat mo mamatay, but will leave one mature, and that's what she call the graafian follicle. All right, this graafian follicle follicle nurses, okay, will rupture because okay, there is some increase of your estrogen. The increase of your estrogen will suppress the follicular stimulating hormone and will increase the level of your LH. Once there is increased level of your LH or your luteinizing hormone, this graafian follicle, follicle will now rupture. Okay? So there is now rupture okay, of your graafian follicle. The rup rupture of your graafian follicle will release now the ovum into the peritoneal cavity. Alright? Okay. Since there is now release of your ovum in the peritoneal cavity, okay, this luteinizing hormone therefore causes the rupture of your graafian follicle, yun na ang tinatawag natin na ovulation. Okay? We, have, we, uh, we are now here, okay, sa phase ng ovulation natin. Alright. Then what will gonna happen after rupture of your graafian follicle, this graafian follicle nurses, okay, so we are now here, Okay, this graafian follicle na nag-rupture will be replaced by what you call the corpus luteum. Okay, so this will become the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum nurses will further increase the production of your progesterone and your estrogen. Okay, will further increase the production of progesterone and your estrogen. Why? Kasi para yung endometrium, ma-prepare nyo for possible implantation. Did you get my point? Okay. Since there is now increased level of progesterone and estrogen, okay, if there is no fertilization and implantation na mangyari, this corpus luteum will degenerate. So there is now degeneration of corpus luteum. The generation of corpus luteum Okay, this corpus luteum will like de de degenerate will become the corpus albicans. Okay, so since that like degenerate siya, the level of estrogen here will in will again decrease, and the level of your progesterone will also decrease. So the end effect here is that there is decreased estrogen and decreased level of your progesterone. Okay, pag nag decline ang estrogen and progesterone. Yung nagproliferate doon sa endometrium, mas slap off na siya. And will become what? The menstruation. Okay? So this is your ovarian cycle. So what should be the first one here? The first one, sh we should start from letter D. Okay? So the first one should be letter D. Okay. Letter D, why? The level of estrogen and progesterone are low, basing from this schematic diagram. Am I correct with that? Since low levels of progesterone natin, the next one should be letter C. There should be release, okay? Release of your GnRH to stimulate the anterior pituitary to, to what? Release your FSH. Then, pag madami ng FSH, okay, it will stimulate the follicles, leaving one graafian follicle. So, the next one here is letter E. The letter E here is development of a large graafian follicle. Okay, that graafian follicle, okay, of course, the next one is letter A. Why? Progesterone levels increase in the corpus luteum secret estrogen and your progesterone. And the last one, the corpus luteum, of course, okay, after letter A, okay, we have letter B. 
Why? The corpus luteum degenerates if the ovum is not fertilized and the secretion of estrogen and progesterone declines. So this should be your correct answer here. Okay? So the letter D, C, E, A, and B. It should be letter, sorry, D, C, okay, E, F, sorry. Okay, I forgot the letter F. And then after letter F, it should be letter D, C, E, F. Okay, the last one is A. Okay, and then you have letter B. Okay, sorry, I forgot letter F. So you have letter D, letter C, letter E, letter F, A, and B. Okay, so sa natin binays yun from here, from our schematic diagram. Okay, so the first one should be letter D. The level of estrogen and progesterone are low. And after that, you have letter C, release of your GNRH. Then should be letter E, development of large graafian follicle. Okay? That large graafian follicle will increase the secretion of LH, so mag-rupture na po siya. Pag nag-rupture, that's ovulation. Okay? It will be replaced by your corpus luteum. Okay? And the corpus luteum will still produce estrogen and progesterone para lalo pa magkaroon ng Okay, preparations sa endometrium for possible implantation. But since hindi na fertilize ang ovum, hindi na karo ng implantation, ang last should be degeneration ng the corpus luteum, leading to what? Development of our corpus albicans. So, bumaba na uli ang level ni estrogen at ni progesterone. So, the cycle will now again begin. Okay, so another start. So, nurses, okay, we are done with question number three. Our program advantage here in my blood is that madalas sa student kasi prior taking to your exam that's why it's very hard for us to understand minsan sa so question na to, pag hindi natin siya na, uh, discuss a topic madalas sa student prior to the exam magbabasa naman natin books okay. then ang books na yun subscribe sa apps muna and mag-enroll sa on-site few days before the exam medyo mag siya but what we're gonna do here is that, okay, as your head coach, kinuha ko lahat ng, okay, mga ba textbook natin. Then we have, okay, an automated predictor exam now. So you have basis of your program. Okay, rest assured, everything is covered and everything is based on the current test plan. That's the advantage of the refresher, of the intensive, and have the booster phase for your specialized nursing topics plus your predictor exam that mimics or simulates the actual NCLEX exam. Alright, so may nakakuha ba na correct na answer sa number 3? Alright, so congratulations. Okay, so are you ready for question number four? Okay, by the way, our program, you can have one access to review. You can study anytime, anywhere. You can rewind. Okay, you can play. Okay, you can go back. Okay, for one year, subscription. And we have high quality video. Okay, and it's a full lecture. Okay, it's not just an application. Uh, Q&A, but you have, okay, full lecture here, just like what we're doing here. But pagdating na sa digital, of course, okay, high quality video na ang makikita natin, okay? But expect same full rationalization, okay? And detailed rationalization per system, okay, plus your delegation, nursing assessment, prioritization, and your psychotherapeutic medication. Please visit our site, okay? www.mindwebacademy.com Alright, let's have question number 4 this time. Ano kayo itong question number 4 natin? This is from Mr. Jerome Hagunia, Hagunia and Kisha Magbanwa. Alright, so dalawa yung nagbigay ng okay, topic ito. Actually, ang dami din nag-request ng topic na to. It's more of arterial blood gas analysis. Okay. So, medyo hirap ba tayo sa ABG analysis natin? Okay, I have your example for your ABG analysis. 
Okay, let's answer question number four. Okay, identify the primary acid-base disturbance below and the degree of compensation. Choose the best answer from the options given. So, you have here nurses pH of 7.38, partial carbon dioxide of 32, and bicarbonate of 19. 19. So, give me your acid-base imbalance, the abnormal or normal, okay, and the degree of compensation, kung applicable po, ang degree of your compensation. Remember, to take note first of the normal values. Okay, kailangan muna natin ang normal values to doon. I would discourage my student, actually, din discourage ko ang student na mag-memorize ng arrow up, arrow down, arrow up, arrow up, arrow down, because that will confuse you in the actual exam. Just try to memorize and know by heart what's the normal pH, what's the normal partial carbon dioxide, what's the normal bicarbonate. Yun lang ang tatlo ang isipin natin. Okay, stick lang kayo doon sa tatlo na yun, then you can have your ABG analysis. Kasi mas confusing pag sinabi natin na memorize natin, arrow up, arrow down, arrow up, arrow down. Personally, nurses, nung kumuha ako ng NCLEX, pagdating ko doon, Okay, parang wala na lahat na napag-aralan ko. So, yung arrow up, arrow down na minimize nyo, medyo mawawala na po yan. So, stick with your normal values. Then, try to analyze. Okay? That's the key in your arterial blood gas analysis. You have to do critical thinking and your analysis. Okay, so pH of 7.38, partial carbon dioxide of 32, and bicarbonate of 19. You can comment your answer in the comment section. Mindweb Academy student gave the right answer first. Do we have a winner right now? Okay, so, okay. What's your best answer? Okay, so before I answer question number four, nurses, okay, let me give you the normal values for your pH. Alright, the normal values for your pH is between 7.35 to 7.45, okay? And then for your partial carbon dioxide, the normal is 35 to 45, alright? Okay, and then for your bicarbonate, the normal bicarbonate nurses is 22 to 26. Okay, but after, okay, knowing by heart the normal values of your pH, the partial carbon dioxide and your bicarbonate, try to know by heart first that your carbon dioxide is acid in nature. Tandaan nyo po yun ha, nurses. Ang carbon dioxide is acid in nature. Okay, because when dissolve in body fluids, that carbon dioxide becomes carbonic acid. So, carbon dioxide is acid in nature. So, pag mataas ang carbon dioxide mo, acidosis ang problem natin. Pag bagsak siya, alkalosis tayo. Alright? Bicarbonate, on the other hand, is an alkaline one. Okay? Hindi siya acidic, but this one is alkaline. So, carbon dioxide is acid. Bicarbonate is alkaline. Okay, normal 7.35. Okay, to 7.45. Carbon dioxide 35 to 45. And bicarbonate 22 to 26. Okay, let us have your ABG analysis here. Look at your pH first. Okay, look at your pH. Your pH is 7.38. Okay, and your normal is 7.35 to 7.45. Are you within normal? Yes. So, since I have 7.38, I can consider that this one is normal. But, okay, I should have to look at, okay, next, my partial carbon dioxide. My partial carbon dioxide, the normal, is 35 to 45. Am I correct with that? Okay, since carbon dioxide is acid in nature, bagsak ang partial carbon dioxide natin dito kasi 32. Mababa siya. So, ibig sabihin, Ang partial carbon dioxide na 32, okay, kung konti yung acid natin, this one is alkalosis. May correct ko that. That's alkalosis. 
So, ibig sabihin, this is not a normal acid-base balance. Why? Alkalosis kasi ang, okay, carbon dioxide na rin. Let's look at your bicarbonate. Your bicarbonate is 19. You have a normal of 22 to 26, right? Okay. Since your bicarbonate is alkaline, mababa yung alkaline natin dito. Okay. So, since mababa ang alkaline natin, this is acidosis. Okay? So, this is not normal acid-base balance. Why? You have abnormal partial carbon dioxide and abnormal bicarbonate. Okay? And normal pH. So, ano kaya yung reading natin? Since nurses, we still have abnormal acid-base balance here, kahit normal ang pH natin, we still have to identify the basic acid-base imbalance. So, how to do that? Okay. So, if your pH is within normal, you have to take note of the median. Okay. So, median. Remember, you have 7.35 to 7.45, right? Okay. And your median here is 7.40, okay? If your pH is somewhere here, okay, it's more of acid, okay? If your pH is 7.40 and above, then it's alkalosis, okay? So since your median is 7.40, that's still normal, right? But here, you are, okay, 7.38, so dito siya banda. Okay, below siya ng median natin. So, it's more on the acidic side, ang 7.38 natin. So, this is acidosis. Okay, since your okay, pH is acid and your bicarbonate is acid, your problem here is metabolic acidosis. So, nagkaroon na nga nun tayo, metabolic acidosis. Next yun na itanong, analyze na lagi, huwag mag memorize Since acidic ang blood ko, Kailangan bang tumulong ni carbon dioxide? Yes. Paano makakatulong ang carbon dioxide natin? Dapat ba si carbon dioxide kasi acid, dapat tataas siya? O dapat babagsak siya? Kasi acid siya. Dapat hindi siya tumaas, right? Why? Kasi pag tumaas siya, lalo maging acidotic ang patient natin. Dapat bumaba yung carbon dioxide natin. Since ang carbon dioxide natin dito bumaba, then, okay, may help ba siya? Yes. So, it's metabolic acidosis with partial compensation. But we are not yet done. Since ang tinignan natin, carbon dioxide pa, na, pa lang, kung tumulong siya, nakatulong, yes, nakatulong siya kasi bumagsak, okay, naging alkalotic siya, tingnan nyo ang pH. Ang pH bumalik sa normal. So, dalawa ang tumulong, the carbon dioxide and the pH. It's not just partial compensation, but it's full compensation. Okay? So the answer here is metabolic acidosis with complete compensation. Okay? So this is just, okay, an example of how to, okay, you do your ABG analysis. In the actual review, in our digital review program, okay, you can Okay, see the algorithm that I have okay, given to my MindGob student. Paano yung algorithm na gagawin niya? But at this point, medyo mahaba kasi yung algorithm na yon. Try to join our program to get that algorithm. Okay? But at this point, ang tinuro ko muna sa inyo, paano i-analyze. Okay? But we have algorithm to follow. And that is in our digital online program okay to better understand the topic okay so our problem here is metabolic acidosis with complete compensation the algorithm na ibibigay natin okay you can encounter that in our actual review program okay so again okay the three phases of our program is the advantage okay we have personalized study plan the study calendar that will help you Okay, allocate, pa-allocate mo yung time mo kung ilang oras ka per day. Okay, kung naghahabon ka, ilang oras ka dapat. Okay, if you're preparing, mas maganda, mas mahaba, then you can have your study calendar. Isa-send dami sa inyo. Then we have the review materials, the workbook, the drill book. You can have this one. Okay, the drill book. Okay, our drill book, okay, have set A to set J. Okay, bago kayo mag-intensive okay, uh, phase, dapat na-answer nyo na to. 
and then play the video of my full lecture and rationale. Okay? Then at the back, I have your high impact key points, okay, per content area or nursing bullets per content area. You have your okay high impact crumb sheet for physiologic integrity. Okay, then crumb sheet also for your pharmacological and parenteral therapies health promotion and maintenance, what should be remembered before NCLEX. Okay, maternity nursing, pediatric nursing, okay, all the content area, okay, bimibive ko na siya para hindi kayo mahirapan. Okay? So that's part of your drill book. Okay, don't forget to share the video to get free nursing bullets and the chance to win, of course, the drill book with high impact key points and nursing bullets. Okay. For the complete code, Okay, again, why MindWeb? Okay, we are happy to announce that we have 100% passing rate. Okay, although it's for, for, for on my part, that's kind of, um, of course, um, something that we have to work hard. Okay, we maintain that 100% na yon. But of course, with the right preparation, with the right mindset, with the right motivation and inspiration, we can always maintain that 100% passing rate. Okay, we have the most comprehensive review, most updated content, okay, access for one year, unlimited playback, okay, review, and we have the automated predictor NCLEX. It mimics the actual NCLEX or it simulates the actual NCLEX. So start your review as early as possible. Okay, 100% passing rate for our digital online review. We started our digital online review last August and with God's blessings, okay, nakakuha tayo so far ng 100%. Wala pa tayong, okay, casualty so far. Okay, so we want to maintain that. So, it just indicates one thing. It, will, it means something. The program works. Basta sundan lang natin. Start kayo yung refresher para may basic foundation. Then intensive na kayo para okay, ma-encounter nyo na lahat ng test format. Then sa booster, lahat ng specialized nursing topics and nursing bullets. Okay? So we have three phases of the program. Okay, so for the benefit of time, we have one last question here. And that's from Mr. Jeffrey Nass. Requested topic is ECG and uh, how to interpret ECG and what's the treatment for that, okay, abnormality. Okay, so, okay, when you say ECG, before I start with your ECG, it takes a lot of time to study ECG. You have to take note of the basic principle first, the basic waves, and then you have the ECG paper, okay, and then you have to know by heart the criteria, okay? The criteria, okay, for the normal ECG tracing or for the normal sinus rhythm, okay? I have here one, okay, important question regarding ECG tracing. Okay, so for question number five, okay, so this is your request, right? And this is common right down your NTLEX. Okay, interpret the ECG tracing below and choose the best management. Okay, choose the best management. Okay, interpret the ECG tracing here. Okay, and after your interpretation, what should be your best nursing okay, management? Okay, if your patient, okay, ECG tracing is this, can you give IV atropine? Will you discontinue drugs such as digitalis and beta blockers? Or will you give digitalis or beta blockers as order? Or is it both A and C?
Okay, so what should be your interpretation and what will be your management? If the ECG tracing of your client is this. Okay, we have a winner right now. Okay, but before I answer, okay, and give you the correct answer, of course, let me discuss basic ECG tracing and abnormalities and your management. Okay, so nurses, remember, okay, that the heart or the myocardium is the actual contractile unit, okay, of the heart. Ibig sabihin, o yung tagalugin natin, okay, nagko-contract ang heart muscle natin and nagre-relax ang heart muscle natin. The contraction and the relaxation of the heart muscle is what you call the mechanical activity of the heart. Can you follow? Kada galaw ng heart natin, okay, tawag doon mechanical activity. Kada galaw ng heart natin or every mechanical activity of the heart can be reflected in your ECG tracing. Okay, so this is how, okay, to interpret your ECG. Now, to take the first nurse as the mechanical activity of the heart. And the mechanical activity of the heart can be reflected in the ECG tracing. Can you follow? Alright. So, the mechanical activity of the heart will include first your okay, atrial contraction. The first activity of the heart is for your atrium to contract. Other term for contraction is depolarization. Okay. Or other term is your atrial activity. Remember that the primary pacemaker of the heart is the sinoatrial node or the SA node. Pag sa SA node galing, yung electrical impulse natin, then it's a, sign, it's a normal okay, rhythm or a sinus rhythm. Okay? So, pag sa SA node galing, dapat mauna muna mag-contract ang atrium natin. So, the first mechanical activity of the heart should be atrial contraction. Dapat ang atrium mag-contract muna. Every time the atrium contracts, this will give you the P wave. Okay? So, may P wave na tayo. Then, after nag-contract ang atrium, after the atrial nurses, kasunod na po ba si ventricles? Yes? So, after atrial contraction, dapat mag-contract na din ang ventricle natin. So, the next mechanical activity of the heart is what you call your ventricular activity or your ventricular contraction. Again, other term for contraction is depolarization or activity. Once ventricles contract, depolarize, or may activity na siya, this will give us the QRS. Okay? You have now the QRS. Since na-contract na ang ventricle natin, dapat ba magpahinga na siya? Mag-relax na siya? Yes? So after ventricular contraction, you should have now your ventricular relaxation. Other term nurses for relaxation is your repolarization. Okay. Or nagpahinga na, nagrest na ang ventricle natin kasi tapos na siya mag-contract. That ventricular relaxation can be reflected in your ECG as the T wave. Okay, so now your T wave. So these are the basic wave that you have to understand. So if your primary pacemaker is the SA node, dapat mag-contract mo lang atrium. The contraction of the atrium will give you the P wave. Then after the atrium contraction, the ventricle should contract also, giving you in your ECG the QRS. And of course, pagpapahinga na ang ventricle natin, that will give you your T wave. Okay, in some cases, you will have the U wave. Makikita natin ang U wave. What are the conditions na mayroong U wave na makikita? You can take note, in case of hypokalemia, in case of hypercalcemia, and in case of hyperthyroidism. In some cases, may makikita tayong U wave. So this is the P wave, that's atrial activity. You have the QRS complex and the T wave. Those are okay your basic 
wave. Okay, para mas simplify na natin ang ECG interpretation natin. You okay? should know your atrial activity. So, dapat mo alam mo na ang P bago mag-QRS. Tama po ba? So, pag noon na ang P or ang atrium, saan galing ang pacemaker natin? Sa SA node. Can you follow? So, it's a sinus rhythm. Lagi yun. Okay. So, this is your ECG paper. Your 3 second strips and your 6 second strips. Okay. The big box here. Okay. One big box nurses is equivalent to point, okay, 2 seconds. Okay, 0.2 seconds, the one big box here. So, for the 3 second strip, you have 15 big boxes. Okay, because 15 times 0.2 will give you 30 seconds. Am I correct? Your 6 second strips will give you 30 big boxes times 0.2 because one big box is 0.2 seconds. Okay, you have to remember that also. So, again, how to interpret for your ECG? Okay. You have, okay, to make you some criteria. Okay, may criteria tayo. Again, okay, ang na-discuss ko muna, what are the basic ECG waves? You have the P wave, and that will mean na nagko-contract ng atrium. After mag-contract ng atrium, mag-contract sa ventricle. So, may QRS na tayo. Then after, okay, ventricular relaxation, that can be reflected in your ECG as your T wave. So, a normal ECG tracing should have the P, the QRS, and the T wave, okay? And, okay, it will it will just indicate since the contract si atrium, saan galing ang pacemaker natin? So, SA node, yun ang nagbigay ng impulse or ng stimulus, okay? Para mag-contract ang atrium. Okay, so a normal is tracing, you call that one also as your sinus rhythm. Can you follow? Okay, so if I'm going to ask you later, is there a P wave? If your answer is yes, so if there is a P wave, it's a sinus rhythm. My QRS ba tayo? Yes, so it should be P wave first, then QRS, so sinus rhythm na tayo. Okay, so what should be your criteria? Your criteria right now, nurses, okay, for your ECG analysis or interpretation is this. Okay, criteria. Okay. For your criteria, you should have your P wave. Check for the P wave. Your P wave, okay, should be point, okay, 12 to point 0.2, okay, seconds. Okay, that should be your P wave. The second criteria, after the P wave, dapat pag-contract na ang ventricle natin. So, ano yun? QRS, complex. The QRS complex nurses should be, okay, 0 0.04 to 0 0.12 seconds. Okay, 0 0.04 to 0 0.12 seconds. Okay, if I'm going to ask you again, yung isang big box natin, ilang seconds siya? It's 0 0.2 seconds. Ang QRS natin, ang normal should be 0.4 to 0.12. So, dapat si QRS para maging normal, hindi niya sasakupin ang buong big box. Dapat na paloob siya sa isang big box lang. Can you follow? Kasi ano lang siya, 0.04 to 0.12. So, dapat sa loob lang siya ng isang big box natin. It should not occupy the whole big box or the two big boxes. Why then QRS na ang tawag natin doon? Can you follow? Okay, then check also for the presence of your P wave. Okay, if you have the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave, then ibig sabihin nun, it's a sinus rhythm na po siya. Okay, it's a sinus rhythm. Ibig sabihin, okay, galing ang pacemaker natin sa SA node. That's why sinus rhythm na tayo. Basta may P, may QRS, tsaka may T. And normal lahat ng Okay, uh, seconds natin. Okay, so since sinus rhythm na tayo, the next criteria is to check for the heart rate. Your normal heart rate is 60 to 100. Okay, 60 to 100. Okay, so the normal heart rate should be 60 to 100. That should be the fourth criteria. Okay, so how to check for the heart rate nurses? Mabilis lang. One way to check for your heart rate is this. Okay, look at this one. 
Okay, can you focus, sir? Okay, look at this one. This one. Okay, to check for the heart rate, just take note of the QRS complex. Okay? Count the number of your QRS. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you have 7 QRX complex. The 7 QRS should be multiplied by 10, giving you 70 okay, heart rate. Okay, so the heart rate here in this case is 70. Why? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 complexes. So 7 times 10 will give you 70. So the heart rate of the client here is 70. So in this tracing versus, okay, let's focus on this. Do you have the P wave? Yes. Do you have the QRS? Yes. Do you have the T? Yes. So is that a normal ESG tracing? Yes. So it's a sinus rhythm. But the last criteria is check the heart rate. Is your heart rate 70? Yes. Is it within normal? Yes. So the interpretation here is this one is a normal sinus rhythm. Okay? Why sinus rhythm siya? Kasi po, may atrial activity tayo. Ibig sabihin ang pacemaker galing sa SA node. Okay. Pag walang P wave, okay, abnormal ang P wave natin, then it's not a sinus rhythm. The problem is purely atrial. Maybe pag softwood ang P natin, abnormal ang atrial activity, so maybe it's atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation. If you have, okay, abnormal QRS, okay, chaotic QRS, and the P wave is hidden because of that chaotic or bizarre QRS, then the problem is purely ventricular. Maybe you have ventricular fibrillation. Okay, let's go back to question number five. Okay, in question number five, Dor says, I'm going to ask you first. Can you see a P wave? Yes. So we have this first criteria. Do you have the QRS? Yes. You have the QRS. Do you have the P? Yes. So it's a sinus rhythm, right? Because of the P, of the QRS, and you have the T. So it's a sinus rhythm. But what type of sinus? Ano yung last step in the criteria ba? We have to check for the heart rate. So check the heart rate here. Ilang QRS complex tayo? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 QRS complex times 10. So what will be your heart rate? 120, right? So in our criteria, the heart rate should be 60 to 100. So we are more than 100. So what should be your interpretation? We have the P, the QRS, the T, so it's sinus, rhythm. Kasi galing pa sa SA. But is that sinus tachycardia or sinus bradycardia? Yes, very good. It's a sinus tachycardia. Since you have sinus tachycardia, your best management for sinus tachycardia is not to discontinue digitalis in beta blockers. Why? If you discontinue okay, digitalis and your beta blockers, okay, then the more na mag-increase ang heart rate natin. Pag nagbigay ka ng IV atropine, Atropine is an anticholinergic that can also increase the heart rate. So eliminate, eliminate. Okay, since you have tachycardia as your problem, I'm going to ask you, do we need to slow down the heart rate? Yes? How to slow down the heart rate? Give beta blockers. Give calcium channel blocker. Or give digitalis. Why? Beta blockers slows down the heart rate. And digitalis slows down the heart rate because it has negative chronotropic effect. Okay? So, you have now the answer. Give digitalis, okay, or beta blockers as ordered. What's, what's the purpose of beta blockers or digitalis? To slow down, okay, the heart rate. Okay. Then, the other management, you can make use also of your radio frequency catheter ablation para i-remove natin ang tissue that causes the tachycardia. Alright? Okay. So again, okay, in your ECG interpretation, always look at if there is P wave, the QRS, and the T. 
If you have the P, ibig sabihin, galing ang pacemaker sa SA. So, it's a sinus rhythm. But check the heart rate also. And you follow, it can be sinus tachycardia, can be sinus bradycardia, or a normal sinus rhythm. If you, have within, if you are within the normal heart rate. Okay? If you have abnormal P waves, so atrial problem. If you're abnormal, okay, QRS, then it's purely ventricular problem. Okay? So expect more of this in our digital online review. We have discussed in our digital online review, if I can remember, it's in the booster phase, okay? For our MindWeb student, okay? The booster phase will give you the ECG interpretation and the management, okay? So booster phase yung makikita ang ECG interpretation and the management. And I have also simplified okay, your ECG interpretation. You can appreciate more of this in our digital review program. Okay, so congratulations for those who get the correct answer. Okay, your IV atrophy nurses and the discontinuation of your digitalis and beta blockers can be your management for your sinus bradycardia. Bumabagal kasi. So, discontinue mo to. Kasi lalong babagal ang heart rate ng client natin. Okay? And then, you can give atropine. Okay? To increase okay, the heart rate of the client. Okay. So, again, thank you for joining our Q&A. We will contact the highest pointer for the price. Okay? And as your head coach, I encourage you to avail the program. Okay? Send a message to our FB page, the MindWeb Academy. We have an ongoing promo. Okay, you can you can have an access for a year. So early preparation is key. Hindi ako naniniwala na one month preparation, okay, will increase your chance for passing the NPLEX. Okay, you can have more time for preparation. Okay, so as your head coach, experience ko lage yung mga nagprepare na matagal. Nag-prepare ng comprehensive tsaka nag-review, yun din ang pumapasa. Okay? So, lahat naman nag-exam, kailangan natin i-prepare. Okay? Dapat may preparation, proper preparation. Okay. So, I hope you have learned something from our discussion. Okay, we have received more topics na pwede i-discuss dito. Common topics that we can discuss. I think uh, those nag-request pa ng iba ng cancer nursing, endocrine disorders, Okay, DOPA, DOBIO, Insulin, okay, GBS, TB, Influenza, uh, in, uh, Precaution, Transmission-Based Precaution, all of those things are covered in our Digital Review Program. So that's the reason, okay, maybe, na mataas ang passing rate natin. Kasi lahat ng topic na cover natin, okay, dapat lang pa, bago kumuha ng exam, dapat may guide tayo. Ano ba yung mga dapat po i-focus? Okay? So, we have the predictor exam that will determine kung prepared na talaga tayo to take the exam. So, that will give you a pass, uh, your candidate performance okay, rating if you have above normal, near normal, or okay, below passing standard. Okay? So, again, thank you for joining our Q&A. Thank you for the 8,000 likes. Okay, thank you so much. We, we are not expecting actually. Our goal is only to have 1,000 likes. Okay, but after a month, we have 5,000. After again, another month, na umabot na tayo ng 8,000 likes. So please, like our page. Okay, and expect more of live classes. This live classes is purely for, okay, service na sa inyo. But ang digital program natin is high okay, definition video from refresher intensive down to booster pace. Okay? So from time to time, we will give you, okay, free live classes. Okay, of topic na gusto nyo i-discuss namin. For those who shared nursing bullets, Okay, we'll be given within 24 hours. Okay? Thank you so much for your time, nurses. Okay, maraming salamat. Okay, on January 25, we are planning again to do, okay, FB Live classes.
Okay, on January 25. Okay, I'll be there. Okay, I'll be present, of course. Thank you so much for your time.